Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ASUS ROG Summer 2015 Hearthstone Tournament. I'm Jordan with uh, two of my Finnish friends, Savit and Kuftan. How are you doing today, Kuftan? Um, I'm doing really well. These uh, have been some ex exciting games today, and I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing some more of these. Yeah, Kuftan, you were actually one of the players who played in the tournament. How did you do, and what was your experience so far in the tournament? Uh, well, my games didn't go exactly like I'd hoped. I uh, lost both of my group stage games and got eliminated straight away, but. Uh, I've been having a really good time just like uh, watching the matches and like, getting to meet all the players and uh, yeah. Yeah, certainly an exciting experience. There's not too many Finnish lands in uh, Finland, of course, and it's always nice to have these assemblies over and over yeah, again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course, our next match will be the fourth uh, quarterfinal. It'll be between Tom and Oskaka. What do we know about these players, Savits? Oskaka, most well known from, uh, from his second place finish at the Zitzor Cup 3. And uh, probably his appearances at the Archon League, playing for Team Force and Boys. Uh, Oscar, a great player. A lot of people, uh, well, the, the pros always refer to him like he's the best unknown player. Well, he, he's getting his name out there, and this, this could be a big, big opportunity for him to make him uh, make uh, to, to let everybody know that how, how good exactly he is at the game. Yeah, of course, this is the fourth quarterfinal, so maybe let's take a look at the brackets and how everyone got here. Tom getting ready, of course. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what what uh, decks we're gonna see from these players as well. Have they mixed things up? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. I actually wouldn't expect Tom to mix it up too much. Um, he plays in a lot of open tournaments. If you played any uh, Hearthstone open tournaments, you probably find his name in there no matter what server it's on. He's kind of devoted his entire life so far to playing just Hearthstone tournaments over and over, and it certainly paid off. He's gotten a lot of um, invites to, uh, he's qualified first of all, yeah. for a lot of tournaments in Taiwan, in uh, BlizzCon of course, and also in England for Gfinity. But he's also got an invite here to Assembly, so it's very yeah. well deserved. Yeah, so Ostkaka bringing out the Paladin once again. He has been playing the aggressive version uh, throughout this tournament. Uh, what's the most interesting thing though is that both of these players are going to be playing Rogue. We haven't seen any rogue at all, and now we suddenly see it from both of them. What do you think of that? Yeah, I actually heard that there was only one rogue in the round of 16. Um, but yeah, both players wow. just switching up yeah. so much. It's, it's, it's really interesting how rogue has been kind of under, underrepresented here, because like, uh, especially with the ban, uh, it, you can really line up the matchups such that rogue can be a pretty powerful deck. Yeah, for sure. And Ostkaka not bringing out the signature of Freeze Mates here, even though he's banning the warrior, not bringing it out. Maybe maybe a little bit scared of the of Kesan Mystics popping I, out from Tom. I think in a format where you get to repick your decks every single uh, after every single round, bringing Freeze Mage might be really risky. It just seems like a deck that can get so easily countered. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna see Ostkaka playing the Rogue here versus the. Uh, I believe it's going to oh, be. It's gonna yeah, be yeah, 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 because Ostkaka is the only yeah. one in the Paladin. Okay, so, yeah, so Ostkaka is the Paladin. I think this is a matchup that slightly favors the Rogue, but it's it really depends on how the early game goes. If the Paladin could get a lot of pressure going, it's yeah. Don't predicting the aggressive version. <laughs> There's a good reason to it. That's what Ostkaka has been playing. It would be a shocker if he if he was to suddenly switch to a mid range one. Keeping, considering at least keeping the Deadly Poison played for it, that's uh, almost a guaranteed clear against it, unless there's multiple uh, Divine Shields. Yeah, uh, the Blade Flurry is nice. It's, it, it can be the case that the Deadly Poison doesn't actually do that much, but uh, it's still nice to keep in case there's a juggler or something involved. Yeah, it does help. Yeah, especially that combination is certainly an auto keep. You get a free AoE almost on turn three. Volley Teacher can be a really excellent card as well. It can. The Paladin yeah. does kind of struggle with the, getting the full clear off. It, there, there might be some Consecrations in there, and so that helps. At least one, probably. But uh, in any case, the Consecration isn't that good if you just use it to clear some 1-1s, one and uh, maybe even the Teacher will survive it. Yeah, and uh, if, if there's a prep drawn, uh, that's basically like the win condition for the Rogue. A big Violet Teacher prep basically like secures the support for you but oh yeah absolutely Pre prepping something like a sap on a blessing of king's ta target uh, on a minion that's already been been buffed that's <laughs> that's quite good it's, it's looking like really nice starting hand from most gaga curving out really nicely with this hand and from tom it's not too bad either 
Yeah, slow and steady. This dagger is going to get pretty good value here. Yeah. You can swing it twice. Oh. Oh wow. Oh yeah. We, we did see this earlier already from 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 Master Kaka. He oh, really, li really likes that Death Lord to protect uh, his other minions. That's that's an interesting choice for sure. Uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Like with a bunch of sm smaller creatures, the Death Lord does do really well. You know, it's especially good against Rogue. What can Rogue really do against this matchup? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, if you sap a Death Lord, it just gets replayed and. It's a free mana card, it's yep. not that good. Yeah, Zap yeah. so wouldn't do anything here. All and of his options seem pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Now this uh, little Argent Squire is now protected by this big taunt. And there's not really too many options here for Tom. Yeah, not I, at all. I think you, you... Yeah, you dagger up for sure, and I think you equip the Deadly Poison this turn. Planning to, like... Yeah, maybe gonna like with Larry Tinker's Oil next get, turn? Yeah. Like, uh, that would be kind of nice. Like, I mean, if he just, uh, just gets, uh, makes a new weapon, Gets the deadly up. With, the, with that flurry, Evis Rate, he is most likely going to be able to clear an entire board from Ostaka. And not only that, but he gets a minion from that dead lot. Attacking the dead lot, sure, why not? It seems like an attack that he will have to do eventually anyway, so why not do it now? The only thing maybe in favor of not attacking there would have been uh, the potential of b top decking a backstab, because in that case he would have, would, would have been able to save the Eviscerator and just be able to backstab the Dead Lord, hit the Dead Lord, and then go to the Flurry. Yeah, I'm, so not sure. I'm not sure if that attack was correct yeah. because of the a, backstab this potential. This is a really difficult turn for the Paladin player. Like, you really don't want to commit too much into the potential AoE that might be coming. Yeah, yeah but with, it, with this deck, how much can you really Play yeah. around IOE. Yeah, that's true. That's it's true. like one of those decks that just kind of have to go all in and hope for the best. I kind of, I kind of like this attack because it doesn't signal 100% to your opponent that um, you have an AOE. Whereas if you just held the dagger, it's like very yeah. obvious yeah, that's a, that you do. Yeah, he does play around the AOE a bit. Yeah, fan of nice would still be really nice, but there's yeah. the monster coming up, so. Oh. Oh, that's yeah, yeah that's a great draw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sweet, but uh, again, like uh, if he uses the fan here, he won't have the fan for the master of battle. But then, he, then he gets to save Flurry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so yeah, he does both. Like, he's planning for this, and uh, yeah, it's kind of works out better for him. He wants the minion right now. Let's see what he gets. Ooh, oh, that's, that's a, that's good a one. big one. Yeah, yeah. Quite often, you, there's so many three trees in the deck. Yeah, uh, I would, uh, that's definitely above average. I would say, uh, besides that second body teacher that might or might not be in Tom's deck, that's probably the best minion he could get, could have gotten. Oh yeah, yeah. Now it's suddenly a tough turn for Ostkaka. Yeah, like I think you want to hold the juggler for the master maybe, but then what do you do this turn? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a tricky turn for sure. Like if, if you try to hold down the juggler master, this turn is going to be so bad. Yeah, it really is. But it's kind of going to be bad no matter what, knowing the hands, but... Um, That's true. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is a really hard position to be in. Like, uh, we were s I was saying that the Death Lord was a great choice, but uh, it, it didn't work out so great here. Yeah. Not like, at all. Justice. It's just the monster. Yeah. This is gonna be a fan of Nacho, for sure. I wonder how much Oskaka is playing towards a potential divine favor draw as well. Don't see fan. If he fans, he can't do anything else really. But yeah. uh, well, we can re-equip the dagger, I suppose. How about the Lotep? That protects him from kings. Yeah. The, in, he knows that there's, yeah, it, there's most likely no quartermasters. Yeah, and uh, yeah, exactly. There's probably no quartermaster in the deck, and. Uh, it makes him play more minions into the fan too, mm. but uh, he does just decide to do it right yeah, now. Gotcha. I guess it's, yeah. I guess it's all right. Like the only way you really lose is uh, you, the paladin gets a lot of place damage in, and uh, just yeah. minimizing that. Can't blame him for that. Yeah. You actually might slightly have to play around quartermaster. All the deck lists of this tournament are uh, up publicly right now, and I have seen some lists that do include one quartermaster. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's it's not unheard of, and uh, yeah. If, if uh, Oskaka were to have it, uh, it would have been pretty brutal there, so yeah, for sure. it's, it's nice to play around it. Yeah. Might have been just game over right there with the ah! one flurry already out. Good justice. That's a lot of damage. Let's see how he deals with this. Two 
two Violet Teachers. Oh man, there's no good way to deal with it. He's gonna have to face tank a six from that. That's really rough at all. There's no way to kill that. Uh, the only way would be to to play uh, the Drake and get a backstab from Yeah, him. Drake into backstab. Yeah. Uh, or Drake into a prep for the oil. As yeah, well. and get the oil on the on the shredder. Um, how if you do play the Drake and you don't draw either of those things, there's a slight chance you might die, uh, mm -hmm. and you might be scared of that. But I I, I don't know if this is good. Oh, that seems a bit early for yeah. early for a heal. But uh, if if he just played the Lotep, he would have a stronger minion out there, and uh, I don't really think Lost Kaka could take him down from seven. I mean, potentially with a with a Leroy, I suppose. If it was a Leroy, then with that Master of Battle weapon, it would have been. Uh, Okay. I don't think these cards are really helping out too much. Yeah, the Consecration is decent here. He can use the weapon to, to get a full clear. Maybe drop the juggler afterwards. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, it's reasonable to think that a, a backstab or something would have been played by now, so just getting a juggler on the board and uh, hoping to get some damage into face with that. Mm -hmm. He wants to play the abuse, but there's nothing to buff with it just yet, so he needs one minion to stick on the board to get more value out of it. Kaka thinking that uh, the chances of the juggler dying are, are fairly high. Not, not wanting to go for it just yet. <laughs> yeah, that's not very good. <laughs> yeah, it's really... you don't even want to play it necessarily. Yeah, you might favor counters yeah. pretty well. Yeah. So I guess it's a Lothep turn here. Probably. Yeah, something like Lothep now, double teacher next turn. Yeah. But again, to your point, Savitz, if Lothep was played the previous turn and then Consecrate would not be an option, yeah. and Lothep yeah. would not be clear at yeah, all. I can see the Drake being the play because uh, you kind of want to save the Lothep for like um, the turn before you kill him, so that you block out any spells. Yeah, it makes sense in, in that way, and also also the potential for that Leroy, because that, that would have been lethal, so he might have been willing wanting to uh, play around with Leroy. Yeah. Uh, but the problem with the Drake is you draw one additional card, and now if the Defined Paper is drawn, you give your opponent an additional card. I kind of like just have like a bit more power on the field. Instead yeah. of that. Here we go. Hey, heal heal in general is that should be played as late as possible. Like it just one turn before your opponent kills and some because you and sometimes uh it might even be right to, to just take some risks and uh play the more powerful minion first. Because for five mana for three three, that's not very useful. You don't really fight for the board with that. Do we go all in here? Uh, does he have any options? Yeah, I, there's not much you can, like, really do otherwise. Uh, maybe you, like, play a dude over the owl and uh, maybe you even hold on to the abusive, but, like, definitely this juggler and this mini bot does need to come down here. Yeah. It's tricky turn. Mm. It's not the position Paladin wants to be in. He, he hasn't found his true champion champions yet, which, which is potentially their best card against, uh, against the rogue. Crucible is the, is, the, is an amazing way to deal with these strikes and uh, or, or just get that uh, face damage in for eight. I think there's a lot of merit to actually just holding the abusive. Mm -hmm. um, if he draws a charger, for example, that's actually just additional two damage. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, that's a that's a very big. Well, it was yeah. about time yeah. since in the first like ten or fifteen cards, he didn't even have backstab or that's true. SI agent. So it's not like he got extremely lucky here drawing. He, he, on average, he would have drawn, it, drawn one uh, way earlier. Yeah, so do you want to... I guess since you really want to play the S side, the question is if the play is low fed or uh, he's yeah, going to go for low fed. Yeah, I like the low fed. Yeah. 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 Pushing for face, setting up the lead. Yeah. Makes sense. Is there any combination of cards here? Uh, like double arcane golem? Uh, I, I think he can still survive by just abusive search and then trading. Or uh, Leroy, Leroy would have been lethal. Yeah, it would have been. But would have been 5 plus 2. Yeah, plus 2. Yeah, yeah he does stay alive, but uh, uh, on board at least. That's uh, but true, but how does he win this? Yeah, it's it's going to be really hard. Maybe there's some combination of cards with like uh, Divine Favor. Bring him, get him lethal next turn, but it's, it's still like, I think he needs something to live. 
Yeah, on the board. Or that yeah. B-Box build. Zap is uh, playable, I suppose. He can get rid of that one and shield the mini, but for now. Yeah, you're one damage of lethal here, here, right with the Zap and the Thinkers. Oh, yeah. So the Whoa. eight on board. No, he actually has it here, right? Because the oil is effective six damage. Oh, yeah, the weapon it's six is one. He has plus the one from he the dagger. So lethal right there. Yeah. yeah, it is. Weapon is going to hit for four, and those minions combined are going to be 11. Yep, let's see if he misses lethal. Uh, that, works that's too. missing lethal here. Yes. That's oh, yeah. It well, it, it, it has a potential that's oh, yeah, yeah. definitely missing. Oh, man. <laughs> if, if there's a leader, right now. Well, I guess. No, the leader would be FP. Trying to figure out ways, like divine favor into Leroy Blessing of Might. Yeah, something oh. like that. But then you still need to play the mini mini bot. Uh, do you have him on you No. Yeah, there's a funny thing here is yeah, no, you know. he might not even have lethal this turn because he's that play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, like I think he does. Tinkers, though. If the he does. Hits it doesn't two. matter where it lands. Does it? It's 12 on board already. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's 4 more from the weapon, that's 16 even. Even without the one. Okay, so... Bit of a bomb is the, from, from Tom in the sense that he, he missed lethal there. Which could have come back to haunt him with some lucky top decks from, from Maust Kaka. But he does still win the game, so... 1-0 for Tom now. Yeah, Rogue getting a surprising win. Like, what do you think about Rogue in this type of format? It's it's just, just a little strange because you expect players to ban Patron, and I think a lot of pros do admit that Rogue is one of the better matchups against Patron. Yeah, I'm really waiting for the, for the winner in the room because no, no matter which one of these players wins, we get to hear the logic behind bringing it because both of them chose to chose to play it in this uh, yeah, th in this top eight. But uh, yeah, if you're leaving the warrior up, there's always a chance that it's not Patron and it, it is Control Warrior, and uh, that's but they, like they the both banned Warrior, yeah. right? Yeah, now. yeah, but. Um, yeah, fair enough. But um, yeah, I mean, with the ro rogue uh, up, it's it's it has a lot of solid matches. Like, uh, okay, so the stats like on the druid matchup are like 50 50 basically. But um, a lot of people do like the matchup for the rogue and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the most difficult decks to play perfectly or play well. But these these players are both uh, very experienced with it, and uh, they are they must be confident in the druid matchup also. See, it divides opinions. Like based on the statistics that we have, Druid is actually pretty heavily favored against the Rogue. But when you talk with some of the top Rogue players in the world, they who have played thousands and thousands of games with the Rogue, they they often feel that way that the Rogue is the favorite going into it. Yeah, but in reality, just based on statistics, it's Oil Rogue has only a 38 per percent win rate against mid range Druid. That's really low. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just feels like. Yeah, like you said, it's one of the more difficult uh, decks to play, and it has like just overall a really win low win rate in competitive play. Yeah, keeping the prep here, I uh, I like doing it against a lot of decks. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, definitely against Hunter. What? Oh, double oh. Screen, oh, that's not good. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I was gonna say one of the advantages of Rogue though is that it actually is favored against uh, hybrid hunters and mid range hunters, well, yeah. although not against space hunters. And in this type of format. I don't think anyone's like really brought face under this tournament, right? I think you might have seen like one or one. two yeah, out yeah, of yeah, yeah, two. But most in, uh, high yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sign's would have been nice last time, but it's still good. If he had that, uh, he would have been able to turn it up. Okay, so this should be. Well, is there something to consider here? I, I uh, backstab. Very yeah, nice like whether or not you backstab. Yeah. He could go face with the weapon afterwards, hope that it's an explosive trap, then he would get the Parseer Battle Cry off as well for free, kind of. Like, the, the trap, this would be so easy to deal with the trap right now, with the weapon. But yeah. on the other hand, if it's freezing trap, then it just kind of wastes your weapon. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if the weapon charge does matter that much. I, I like just uh, hitting face. Yeah, he's, he's gonna test the thing, hope that it's explosive. Nope. I actually I kind of value this weapon charge a bit because you would expect to probably prep sprint next turn and then you're going to waste or not waste but you're going to use use up all your mana next turn and you want to get a tempo back in the game and using up one additional turn to just dagger up or two extra mana dagger up might be too much. 
it might be. It's it's kind of hard to predict since the sprint will draw the cards that you will, will actually be playing, like your current hand. It could be snakes here. I would expect Kostkaku will start this off by attacking, into, trying to attack into the Leo. The, there's no deck hand inside or anything like that, and the freezing trap needs to be dealt with later on anyway. So this is the perfect opportunity though, to also test those snakes at the same time. Yeah, he should yeah. go for it, I think. Yeah. yeah, let's see. Okay, it is freezing, freezing. So, yeah, prep sprint and. Uh, what are you hoping to draw up? Five? Another prep. Another prep. Yeah, that's prep. Prep yeah, is that's good. The yeah, best draw. Prep is for sure. Great. And heal. Okay, you're gonna prep it straight now. Uh, this plays around Town Master, I guess. That's the reason you want to do it now. Yeah. It also plays around not taking damage to your face. <laughs> I suppose, but you have a heal bot in hand and you're at 30, so. Yeah, yeah. The two damage isn't that bad, but yeah, if there was like a buff on the creature, that would be pretty devastating. Yeah, like the, the reasons to keep the prep there would have maybe been something like easy combos with the assay agent that he also has, or eh, I don't know. Oh wow, double oh, heal. That's but. interesting. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it sure is. This is kind of like a more of an innovation recently by Dog, who really likes to play double heal bot in his rogue decks. But this turn is not looking so great. <laughs> Will we see a tempo heal bot is the question. No. No, just fars here. Yeah. Uh, I guess he fars here over the yeah. heal bot for sure, but uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty bad though. But it's still pretty bad. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, and like, you actually feel pretty safe right now because you have the double heal bots. Yep. Alright. That's a powerful turn right there, and he, he can even follow it up with the high man. What do you think about that additional uh, abuse of sergeant here? Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, it's just nice, especially it with the low feb effect. Uh, yeah. There's not going to be any AOE coming. Like, Fan so. of Knives is unavailable, so yeah. it's most likely getting dealt by the weapon, but that, that's a, it's more damage right there from the abuse. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And this is another really awkward turn here. Yeah. I, I mean, he doesn't really have any options. Yeah, it's going to be a deal, a, but it's a bad play for the board. I totally expect to see a high main here. Yeah. This is where it gets interesting because he could have some other options too if he's scared of sap. We haven't seen a single sap yet. But how worried about it are do you, you do about you trade it? If you play the high main, just just like to make sure that like the sap isn't as bad. Like if a high main getting sapped when your uh, rogue opponent has an empty board is not as bad as when they get like yeah. creatures and uh, combos and. We know that there is no sap right now, so high man would be the strongest play, but from his point of view, I'm not going to be surprised if he chooses to go with something else. Wow, really going for Mech Warper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty good with this Shredder in hand. So, he played around sap, but this is a he little weird. He played around the yeah. wrong things in exactly. the end, but, but it's a guessing game. We can't blame him for that. It's impossible to know exactly what's yeah. in there. It's also this is he played around uh, a one card, uh, one card, and, and he's now playing around this two card combination of poison and blade yeah. flurry. Yes, oil blade flurry would, would be unavailable because there would be eight mana. He does have exactly the dead poison flurry. There you go. Now you go for the high man then a turn after. I guess. Uh, I mean maybe. The, if he was playing around Sap last turn, I think he's gonna keep playing around yeah, I mean, Sap this turn. Yeah, be more consistent. I, I guess Shredder uh, Wolf Rider is a yeah. good play. You get to I main next turn of the hero power, or just go face with the yeah. Yeah. Still playing around that Sap. Sap is one of the the best ways for a for a rogue to win this matchup. But when you get to Sap a high man, it's such a powerful turn right there. They're taking the tempo worth four mana. I'm, I'm not. I can't blame them for, for playing around it. Yeah, no, this turn it was just like the mana efficient play. You know, it feels nice yeah. to use all of your mana. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's nearly threatening enough. Yeah, yeah. No. For sure. Saving the Abyss right here. Finally, time for the high man. Uh, I think just hero power here. Oh yeah. Getting as much damage as possible, especially with the kill command in hand. How good is the freezing trap really? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, he tried to play around the sap for a lot of turns, and now if the rogue does have the sap, this is like a really good Yeah, if his optics is right now, that would be kind of hilarious. Yeah. 
Not quite. Uh, he could sprint for it. I don't know if that's the play, though. It's pretty risky. If he goes for it, that's exactly what he needs. Like, there's nothing else that he would be happy with. Yeah. He's pretty deep into his deck, so I mean, the chances are okay of drawing it. He could just play his minions, maybe. But does that play into Unleash? Uh, yeah. I don't know if a free dog Unleash is that bad. No, it's not that bad. But Unleash is one of those cards that Tom would be likely to have in this situation, because we haven't seen a single one yet. Yeah, it's true. We could also ban into Eviscerate to get rid of the high man, or the, like the front half of the high man. Yeah, uh, yeah, that seems kind of weak. The baby high man is still gonna be around. Well, it's not actually a baby high man. It's the hyenas eat the high man at the end. Oh, right. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's a that's a pretty bad draw. Also, also, this freezing trap is kind of dead in your yeah, hand. You yeah, you, you can't use it now because for button. sure. It's uh, the, with the heal bot on board, uh, and you you can't use your damage on the heal bot to like get something else. Yeah. Freezing trapped. You need to go face here. And, uh, the only thing good about it having it in the hand is that he can't play the scientist now, and the scientist won't dig the last freezing trap out of the deck to bounce the <laughs> heal bot. Yeah, that is true. Always look at the bright side of things. Uh, yeah. That's really looking uh, at the bright side. Do you think there's like a merit to like just playing the kill command now while you have the guaranteed beast on board? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's gonna win a board like a trading, trading game. There's no way he can trade. He yeah, has to go for face. For sure, there's no trade. Yeah. So I, uh, I guess there's no reason to save it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, the kill command will be going to face. It's not gonna hit a minion, so why not do it? Now? Yeah. Down to six. You know what? This is actually a pretty difficult position. For Ostaka. Ostaka. Yeah, he's used both heal bots, he's used one Farseer. Oh, like... look at that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Uh, how much damage is this, though? This is 10... Uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it, it's not quite, I don't... 10 on the board, yeah. It's, uh, the oil is... He has 21 damage. Yeah. The oil is 6 damage, the emissary rate is 4. So that's 10 in hand, 1 from the weapon, 10 from the minions. Zapping the high man. Pretty good, but I, I can, I'm trying to think if, if there's also like a way to zap the scientist, but that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. high, high man would be way too painful. Yeah. But Tom has has the kind of the lethal setup here in, in case that um, in case that the scientist will uh, will find the explosive yeah. drop. Yeah, I think you do this. Try and see if it's freezing and uh, okay. yeah, try and get. Yeah. But oh, actually, he might miss damage because of this. Oh, that's true. Yeah, like he because he should have waited to first. see if. Yeah, uh, he should have oiled first. Yeah. That's getting a bit funny. Oh, no. oh yeah. That's yeah. That's so even if it wasn't explosive, he would have still went for the oil. Yeah, I mean, he, the rope was coming no, down and uh, yeah. he didn't actually like, get to see the animation, I don't no, think. No, well, it's not necessarily a mistake because he was expecting there to be a freezing trap. Yeah, yeah, so like he, so he in that case, in case that it gets frozen, he's guaranteed to get the oil of the shredder anyway. So yeah, maybe just a little bit unlucky. Oh my. Oh, never hover baby rage. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Like, Hopper would have been lethal, but... Uh, so, yeah, Rogue, not a common deck to bring into this tournament, but both Rogues have gotten their wins off, at least. Wow. Why did people start bringing Rogues earlier? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's just like the, the classes that you expect are Hunter, Warlock, Warrior, mm -hmm. and then most people try to bring a fourth deck, and for some reason, Agro Paladin seems to be one of the top picks, or Druid. Yeah, Druid is a, it's a little bit surprising to me because it faded out for a while. Like, like a month ago, we didn't, we didn't see that much Druid, and when we did see it, it was usually struggling. Mm -hmm. But now, suddenly, almost everyone in the tournament have been bringing it back. Maybe, maybe it's a fourth deck. Like, if you only yeah. played three, uh, it would be the one that would get cut out. Yeah, I feel like there's been like s at least some innovations with Druid recently. Mm -hmm. uh, Double Angel of War. I know some lists have been including one Sentient Shield Master mm -hmm. just to like deal with patrons and also have a stronger turn four play, which is generally considered, I think, one of the, s the most important turns in Hearthstone. The Double Angel of War seems to be all almost the standard right now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, 
I don't remember seeing a list in this tournament that didn't have a yeah. ancient. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there was a couple, but okay, mostly it's been the ancient of war list. Yeah, um, Tice originally he was using double ancient of war, but I think in his recent list in the quarterfinals he was using something like rag. So, and it might also be um, yeah, it's, consistent it's, it, with like what you yeah, expect. It's to your do opponents. with what you are expecting to ban and face in general. Like uh, if you're expecting freeze mage, then the, you know the rag is obviously like an excellent yeah, it's choice. Pretty good. So now, yeah. Agro Paladin Hunter versus Druid and Hunter. Hunter Mirror. Yeah, this could be a pretty important matchup, or yeah. this for sure. For sure. So, do you keep this in your opening hand if you're the Hunter when you're going for, as player one? Uh, I think keeping Unleash would be kind of weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, know if we want to juggle because that trade so poorly with the scientist. Probably just just want the one drops. I think Tom played the the aggro version yesterday. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's just see. Yeah. It's not necessarily what you want in your opening hand, but just generally in the hunter mirror, whoever gets mm. uh, an early lead keeps that lead unless knife juggler unleash comes out. Yeah. Yeah, but especially going first, uh, keeping a turn five yeah. play is like not something you really want to do. Not only keeping a turn five play, but keeping two cards that consist of yeah, a turn five yeah, play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, actually, like we uh, we saw the we saw the hunter from Tom, and it was the mid range one. But uh, Ost Kaka is the one who's, who likes to play the face hunter. Okay, and, uh, if that's the case, he should be favored here. Yeah. Quite a bit. And, uh, well, we already this see this that. This is a decent hand, though. Uh, you know, I think you just yeah. All this turn, you have bow, you have the shredder. I mean, if things work out, like line up. Accordingly, uh, it can work out, I think. Go, yeah. Live Zuka, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, every time. I think it's one of the best cards in the mirror. Just yeah, against, it's really good. I guess aggro decks in general. Yeah, it's like now it looks like the play is just like bowing down this free one, and then you take free damage more. Like it's, it's not good. Uh, no. I guess with that drawn, you could go for the Oh my god. I, I almost think that he has to go for it. He's behind right now. That, that, that's what it's Yeah, yeah the round. bow for sure doesn't feel like a winning play. You can definitely see Tom is pained by his decision, decision yeah. that he'll have to make now. He's like, do I have to do this? I don't want to. If it doesn't hit... Yeah, I mean, uh, if he goes for it and it doesn't, work, it doesn't hit, it's pretty much over. Like, yeah, on he's in really bad shape. But it might be something that he just has to do. So that would have put him ahead on, you know, on the board. Oh, oh he's just got trying to play it safe. No balls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like now the other hunter has the initiative, and you're already down on life. So mm -hmm. like, it's it's a really bad spot to be. He does have the freezing trap, so that that's kind of supports playing the ball here, because the next minion is going to be answered by that. The bow sometimes, quite literally, is a double-edged sword because in this matchup, like every time you clear minions, you're taking a lot of damage. That's true. Even if, like, for example, the shredder comes down and the bow hits it on the next turn, that's still four damage to your opponent's face. Yep. Is there any merit to just like arcane golem in here? No, you can't do it. So. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to give the mana buff. Like, uh, it's an interesting choice still because he had to bow the free one last turn, so maybe he would have to bow down the arcane golem as well. Uh, Ostkaka knows that uh, Tom is playing the high man version, so he doesn't he, like uh, allowing. Turn five high men is a, is a pretty big deal. Yep. I feel like that was more of a bluff than anything. Bluffing both snake and freezing trap here. Uh -huh. mm. Although the explosive trap, just having it on the board against an opposing hunter is not bad by any means. Often when you see a live zoo guy, it's, uh, the trap is going to be explosive, but not, not every time. In hunter, you can just play any, any traps really and you'll do just fine. Freezing trap is the most common one. So almost the same turn from Tom. Yeah. Oh, so Ostkaka playing both explosive and freezing. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, just generally in these type of tournaments, you have to mix it up sometimes, especially when you get to resubmit your decks after every single round. Yeah, like if, if the opponent thinks you have like a specific secret and it turns out to be like something else it's it's really big sometimes like it can win you games on yeah. its own just like playing around the wrong secret 
And I think Snakes is pretty cool in this format as well, where you get to change your deck list multiple times. Because uh, your opponents are for sure they're gonna go through your previous previous deck list and they're gonna look at it. Oh, freezing traps, uh, explosive traps. But snakes is the one trap if they haven't seen it before. It might be something that you wanna bust out at, at the top eight. I saw someone. I saw someone yesterday. They brought snipe in one of their decks. Uh, that was actually me. Was me. I had okay. snipe in my decks. Yeah. That's not bad, right? Uh, yeah. Well, it didn't work out, but like. Uh, yeah, you know, against Patron Warriors, Snap is a pretty cool yeah. card. <laughs> uh, probably the worst card he could have drawn. Yeah. Like, it. There's a, oh, actually only like maybe a slight lead in board for Oskaka, but in a, in a Hunter Mirror match, any slight lead can snowball so quickly. Yeah, definitely. Call, they're playing the abusive. Yeah, the abusive is a great thing. Or is it? I mean, Ostkaka's trap is, uh, is explosive. Yeah, we, <laughs> we know it's explosive. Oh, yeah. But um, thinking it's freezing, you definitely do want to play yeah. it. Could, it could just as well be a, be a freezing trap. Yeah. If he actually had the same knowledge as we do, I guess he wouldn't play it. Because it kind of doesn't do anything because the explosives. So I think you, you keep on bluffing the Freezing Trap here. <laughs> or do you actually play a legit Freezing Trap? I think that's pretty funny. That's pretty cool to keep bluffing, but I don't know. You could also just like... Uh, yeah, okay. See ya. I think that's the Shredder. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Oh, go face. Uh, oh, yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, yeah, because of the order of the yeah, traps. Yeah, the explosive yeah. triggers first and kills the abusive. That's gonna be a lot of charges on the bow if he attacks. But if he doesn't attack, like, how can he kill? How can he kill Ostkaka without attacking? It's just not happening. Yeah, he. Oh, that's such a bad spot. <laughs> yeah. Both of those minions are gonna be wiped off the board, but not only that, Ostkaka will be getting two extra charges. Yep, yeah, I, I don't think you can skip attacking to like play around the bow charges. Like, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, I, uh, since, since there's freezing, obviously, actually, that's good. Yeah. I mean, attacking doesn't do anything but gives your opponent charges. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you but the options, they are so bad. The problem is, if you don't attack here, you'll basically never develop your board. I mean, this is the play, it doesn't feel very good. No, not at all. Creeper also dying to the explosives. Yeah. What it needs to happen is uh, Ostkaka to play a minion, which he can then uh, use to attack with, uh, with another minion to trigger the freezing trap first. Yeah, that uh, but it's really unlikely that Ostkaka would play a minion in this spot. Yeah, exactly. He can just hero power and uh, yeah. not do anything. It, it almost seems like a Mechazen stand standoff where like neither player can do anything except hero power. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, Ostkaka is the one with more life. No, Skaka's the one with more burst in his hand. Yeah, so if he just hero powers here, he can put the uh, Tom down to 15. Uh, okay, so... Okay, yep. Yep. Oh. oh! So he'd much rather play around yeah. explosive. Makes sense, things. yeah. He used yeah. that to, to bounce the Arcane Golem to get rid of that trap. Okay, very yeah. good play there. Yeah, it, that was Snakes for some reason. Uh, that would have been that. Yeah, this is the second time that he sees oh, Tom's right, deck, so. and he actually was he killed the scientist in the previous game, and there was no secret coming out. He kind of knows that there's no. Oh snakes. yeah, that's true. But even if it was Snakes, there's still the explosive up. So oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Been that's also true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the Dark Angle so much. I think it was uh, really heads up play, figuring it out it, uh, to run into the freezing. So next turn he can go face with it. Not leaving a minion on the board. So what's the plan here? <laughs> high main pass? I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I feel like the game is already main. over. Yeah. There's no way Ostkaka can really lose this. Because next turn he can he can use the arcane column and hero power on face, at the face with the bow as well. That says a lethal with the with the owl kill command. I so, think. Uh, I think what maybe Tom is waiting for is a charger mm -hmm. so he can uh, set, set up the explosive trap and then use the charger to set up freezing mm -hmm. 
so that he can get this 10 damage in with the Fretter and the uh, high mail. Yeah, it's still not like... Well, it might end up being enough, it's hard to say. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Arcane Golem with the hero power 6 plus 3 from the bow. Do you go with that and uh, do the kill command next turn? Is, th is there a better play? What if he uh, just plays the owl, kill command hero power phase for 7, goes in phase with the bow? Then he wouldn't lose to load that. Yeah, I, I guess the arcade golem is better. Like, yeah, the only thing. Yeah, and you even use the bow. I'm trying to think if he gets punished by a load here. Yeah, um. Lotep would actually do it. Tom needs precisely Lotep. No, that's not it. Because even with the explosive trap, now, now he's oh. down to getting a white actually, talent in totem. Actually, totem. since there's a minion on board, he can trigger the explosive yeah. and. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the freezing, and uh, if there was a second kill command, this would be over now. Tom would win. Yeah, that's also true. Like with double kill command. If he draw a kill command, this would actually be lethal for Tom. If he draw Lotep, that would prevent the lethal from. Uh, from Ostalka, but with, with the cards that he right now has in his hand, it's just not happening. He needs a vitality totem from this better. So he definitely has to trade here. Yeah. yeah. Good luck! <laughs> Don't just know who he needs to try the vitality. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's not looks quite like good. almost good. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Almost good. How much does Vitality Totem heal for? It heals for 4? 4, four yeah. Really. yeah. Yeah. So it, it would have been enough. Kill command, uh, he has kill command hero power with only 7. So he would have healed barely out of the trench. Yeah, that was a really intense game. It was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also want to point out that it's kind of like a, both players are slightly different in how they express their emotions. Of Skatka with no emotions whatsoever that can be shown on his face. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tom kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. Mm -hmm. Koka, uh, it's it's really amazing. Like, he can get the worst RNG in the world, and he can still just like stoically just like. Uh, yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a game. Yeah, after all. yeah, exactly. And uh, I, like because of that, I don't think Oskaka like tilts very much, and that can be like really big in like some situations. Like, players tilting and making misplays can cost you series. Yeah, so that's true. Definitely. At least he doesn't show it if he does. Yeah, I mean, he might be like uh, falling up on the yeah, inside. inside yeah, inside, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I think uh, in a way he's kind of like the opposite of RDU if you know him. <laughs> like, after RDU like, wins or loses the series, he'll explain to you everything that happened, and then sometimes he'll be like pretty mad at what happened if he loses the series. Where, as like Oskaka, he'll be like, oh, this happened, I guess. Yeah. It, it was like Hearthstone, whatever. <laughs> so it's going to be the Agro Paladin versus the Druid. How yeah. is this matchup for the Druid? It's pretty bad, right? Well, uh, we were talking about this earlier, that um, it kind of divides opinions. Like, I, I would think that it's, uh, it's pretty good for the Paladin. But if the Druid gets the inner weight, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Swipe can be really efficient at clearing off the board. It board, can. Right? Like, the Acro Paladin is, is almost the only thing that Swipe works against us on AoE. Yeah. <laughs> because most of the stuff is 1 HP. It, it's kind of strange because uh, most of the aggro decks are a favorite against Druid. Zoo, Tempo Mage, mm -hmm. Mech Mage, or Mech Shaman, Mech Mage. But Face Hunter favors the Druid player, so uh, maybe like one question we have to ask is: Is Paladin more like Zoo or more like Face Hunter? Probably more like Face Hunter, but uh, there's, if there's a difference because the Paladin kind of relies on the on the minions. There's no hero power like like in Hunter, so Druid has the possibility of taunting up. And once you set up that five ten taunt, if there's no answer to it, it's just it's a good game right there. While Hunter can sometimes just hit the hero power button, hit, the, hit it again, use that quick shot, use that kill command. Paladin doesn't have those tools. That was a really quick turn. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, there's a lot of different lines to go for here, but... Uh, uh, I think that, that might have been the best one, because he knows that yeah, well, even though he doesn't have a play for turn 2, there usually will be one, because the hero power does find the target quite often against this. Like, the hero power is pretty good. I mean, he, he did have the raw too. But uh, that's also uh, kind of situational. What about playing the shade on turn one? No, that misses up his mana pretty bad, I think. But I wouldn't have hated to see that. 
he, he could have kept, uh, he kept a coin in that case. So it would have been like turn two hero power of Wrath, and then uh, turn and three coin straighter. Yeah, I mean, not bad at all. Yeah, definitely like the hero power here. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, he, especially against Agro Paladin who uh, has defined favor, obviously. Yeah. You oftentimes don't want to draw it all with the rat. And the big deal is also that he doesn't have a turn 4 play right now. So on turn 4 he will have the option to hero power and rot. So that's actually quite alright. Even though oftentimes you would have preferred to just play a 4 mana card. Yeah. Mm. Look, the paladin hand was looked pretty powerful like on its own. Like mm -hmm. a pretty decent curve, but with what the Fruits played it. Yeah, it's really awkward. It's not that great right now. The Truce of the Champion might be really big, but we'll see. It might, yeah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, <laughs> what if he sequenced the difference? But how do you know? I yeah, mean, it's gonna I mean, be anything. It's gonna be a mana raid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mana raid The two you normally, or the three you yeah. normally check for are the mana raid, the Nubian Weblord, and the uh, Doomsayer. Yeah. And yeah, I guess like you never think about this one. I've like actually never had like an Not occurrence where this is like really relevant. Yeah. That's interesting. I like, watching tournaments. I, I don't remember anybody who's casting e ever to say that. Oh, he should trade first to see if he gets a knife juggler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are all, all like such low percentage like things. It's, yeah, for sure. It's really hard to like fault anyone for like. It could make like, a huge difference this game, though. It could. Yeah, yeah. it could, absolutely could. I mean, imagine if he got the juggler that abused him. Then the trade wouldn't have happened. Do you have the swipe? Nope. It's all draw for one, yeah. and uh, not too bad. Let's see if he picks up something he can innervate. Oh, oh, that's that. I think you oh, fall oh, for yeah, it. For yeah, you play, it. you play around the divine favor. Yeah. So next turn it looks like he's divine favor turn. The uh, druid is in a really good spot, I would say. Yeah, for sure. With that like belter in the hand. Belter, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Death Death Lord. Lord. Yeah, I don't know. It's not that great in this situation. You're supposed to have a board already when you play that and protect the ones on the board, but it's just it's a bit weird. <laughs> so you true silver face? Yeah, like uh, if you start true silvering creatures here, I don't think there's a way you win that game. Like uh, yeah, you go down a dark, dark path. Yeah, maybe it has to be the death lord. Because yeah, just on the what what uh, what Tom has on the board, it's not enough to kill the death lord alone. No, the problem is if you don't kill a shade now, it's gonna fairly snowball. That's also true. But if you if you spend four damage on it, can you win the game? Yeah. So he can't win a value yeah, game. The, yeah, but the Death Lord is also like pretty weak against the shade since it gets an extra health. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to kill the shade. Go for a little bit of longer game. He figures out there's like just no way that the damage is gonna be enough at least. Okay, that's a pretty good draw. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I mean, with yeah, two cards in hand, it's not that... No, no, it's, it's good because it allows you to use all the cards in your hand faster. Yeah, and th there's, a, there's a fair chance that the Emperor will be around for multiple turns as well. Like, it's most likely it's going to be there for uh, at least two turns. Yeah, like, it's a, it's a pretty good play, and just the 5-5 five -five body yeah. is nice, but uh, it's not like he needed the Emperor draw. Emperor is almost like taunt, but you like, how often can you leave it up? But the Paladin doesn't have a good way to remove it either. Yeah, I mean, even if he did, he might not go for it. It's mm -hmm. it's really hard to win from that spot. It is. Those Kaka is nowhere near killing to killing his opponent. All he has is a death lord on the board and an arcane golem in the hand, and there's still 17 HP yeah. on the turret. This could very well be a savage war turn here. I wouldn't be too surprised. Yeah, just uh, it lets you use up more cards in your hand yeah, again. Yeah, and it exactly clears up the like death Because it still frees in the shade as well. Yeah. And uh, but there's no way the Paladin wins okay, this sure. like, without the Divine Favor. Like, uh, so yeah, play around the Divine Favor as much as you can. Yeah, that's that's that should small. be good. I'm just like, every time I see the, the green borders on the Emperor, I'm like, yes, that has to be it. <laughs> Unless there's a Dr. Boom as well, which is also with green borders. Sometimes you can play the Emperor over the boom when both yeah, three quarters. It's it's a bit situational. Yeah. 
base. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Me no need to trade. You don't even have a choice to trade at this point. No, this is like, oh, do you even, do you play the charge? I guess you do. But if he picks up mm. bombs, then there's no more chargers. Like both of those are gonna die. The, the keeper of the crow is just make a trade for the arcane golem. This is looking awful for the Saga right now. Okay. Even playing the owl. All in. I mean, yeah, it's. I think it's all right. Like, you're so far behind that if there's like a taunt, there's. Yeah, I, I don't think you can play around that. Yeah. Oh, oh wow, wow, the swipe. Yeah. Not. Good game. Unless. Uh, yeah. Okay, nah, good game. Divine <laughs> favor <laughs> into. Wolf Rider. Yeah. He didn't like true silver. Then go face, survive a turn, then top deck a divine favor for Leroy, blessing of might. Okay, How so about that? There was a way to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder if Ostagaka even plays Leroy. We haven't seen it in any of his games. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen it in any of the games yet, that's true. Not everyone plays it, but it's, it's one of those cards that if you draw it before divine favor, it's so bad, yeah, it just it ruins really it. Is. Yeah. But, um, but it's one of the best top deck cards when, when the game goes a little bit longer. Yeah. But yeah. It just reminds me of how, like, when Face Hunter first came out with, uh, with Quickshot, a lot of people had Leroy in it. But I think generally these days, Leroy is non-existent in Face Hunter decks just because of the anti-synergy be between yeah. Quickshot and Leroy. Okay, mm. yeah, so here we go. Paladin and Hunter this is going to be the last match. Both of Tom's losses, I believe, have been from this Hunter. Yeah, uh, this is really good. Yeah, the Owl is an alright card sometimes against the aggressive hunter, but I don't think you keep it in the open hand. It's like it's good against like a blessing of kings. kings yeah, that's, but you that's can't too late in the game. game it. You, you want to, like you want to really it. want to find a one drop here. Yeah. Because you're going first. The Owl is useful for a lot of different things between the two players. Like you said, like the Owl's good for silencing mad scientists on turn two if you're the aggro paladin. Mm -hmm. But if you're the um, if you're the hunter, you actually want it for like turn four-ish, uh, like you guys said. Yeah, like uh, at least it's such a key card. Sometimes it, there's like a mini bot you can can play the owl, but it's not yeah. like it's not some uh, so good that you want to keep yeah, it. Yeah, even but in the rare scenario where you <laughs> you can owl like an argent squire that's been buffed by blessing uh, of might, it's not even like that good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well done. Yeah, this the is total the mana cost of Ostkaka's hand is six. Yeah, but I mean, I think this is really much exactly what he wants. I mean, yeah, it's good. It, it is. Unless favorite. there's an explosive trap, which would yeah. Yeah. completely wreck him. Also, unless there's Unleash the Hounds eventually. Yeah, I thought I does have it. Yeah, and he can play these creatures so fast that, like, the Unleash would be just an Unleash. It's it's only a clear at most. But I mean, I guess the clear is pretty Yeah, the clear is quite strong. It's quite strong, especially because it's like a four for one. Yeah. Not only does Oskaka have to be worried about the Unleash here, he has to be worried about oh, a knife juggling. Juggling, yeah. Like, this is so dangerous. For yeah. Me. But no matter what he chooses to play here, what he chooses to do, it's still gonna be dangerous. Like, he has to take some risk here. He just needs to, like, choose what, what to play around and what to risk. There's no way he can just hero or, like, slow down like that. I don't, I don't yeah. think so. Yep, just going all in, playing the strongest player. Yeah, and then this is the mana efficient play as well. But yeah. Not that that's like super important, but oh. it's oh. it does, that makes yeah. it so easy for him. I mean, with double yeah, yeah. unleashes in the hand, obviously you go for it. He gets to even save one. No, he doesn't actually go for it. That's a bit unfortunate. It's I'm still thinking, good, yeah. yeah. But it's still good. Still really strong. Second juggler, that's alright, I guess. Good, yeah, I suppose he needs to land the juggle on one of those spectral spiders though. So Otherwise they trade for the juggler. Which one, which 2-1 do you value more? Do you play the South Sea because you value the abusive buff more? Or do you play the abusive because you value the charge more? Mm, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, like both of, the, both of the abilities get wasted here. Yeah. I mean, maybe they're abusive. 
You yeah. can point the buff at the at the spider that you want us to fight. So the jack is now. Okay. That works too. Oh, Juggler as well. Yeah, this thing is so good for them right now. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a beast on the board, so he can't play the Houndmaster very efficiently. That's still fine. But I mean, Juggler, Scientist, or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you, I you think can you save just the Juggler too yeah. for the Unleash. Yeah, but I, I like playing both of them, just again, playing around the Divine Favor, even in this matchup. Oh, that's good. Yep. Yeah, you probably shouldn't save the Juggler for the Unleash combo. But not like. 100% sure on, on that one. So. I, uh, I think you're blessing a king's yeah, face. Yeah, king's face. So yeah. Hope to top deck a, 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 a charger for the freezing trip. Yeah. Oh, he could, what could he do with, uh, with the true silver? Uh, yeah. It's pretty bad. Even if he like clears, then there's still a really bad trade into the charger. Yeah, so. the scientist is going to be trading, but he has to go for the kings. Yeah. No way that the Jerusalem is right. From what I understand of this deck, I'm sure Ostkaga has played it way more. So mm -hmm. if, he, if he just go for the Jerusalem right, he's just gonna say, that, oh yeah, of course it's Jerusalem. <laughs> but uh, to, to me, it seems like like the Kings would, would, would be way better. Any, yeah. any merit to playing the minions? No, Getting you're gonna be mana out. efficient. I think that you wanna get the four mana card out of your hand at this point, so that once you draw the divine favor, you're gonna get as much value out of it as possible. Oh, Azuka. Ready to rise. There's some, some sequencing error there. Could, was there a way to like guaranteed get the uh, um, yeah. like how? Uh, I'm not sure, but like uh, like get the juggle the face or uh, no no no, but the buff from the Glaive Suka because it was it was just wasted with the juggle just now. Um. But he couldn't know which one it would. Uh, uh, but like uh, hold on. So he needed to deal uh, five damage to it. I mean, I guess no, like you, you mean like, could he have guaranteed the buff on the juggler? Because now, but he needed to manage the juggler in order for it. Yeah, to yeah. So I, he couldn't like. I, no. I don't think there was like a good one. Yeah, he couldn't play it first because then if the juggler doesn't hit, then uh, he he would have to trade the juggler. Okay, well that's an interesting draw. At this point, Ostkaga is well aware that there's only two freezing traps in Tom's deck, so he knows exactly what the chick is. And it's a bit of a like learning experience throughout this kind of series whenever you play against a hunter. Yeah. For justice. Because he knows it's a freezing trap, then uh, he won't necessarily use it on his uh, golem. But even yeah. if it's not freezing trap, even if he didn't know that, he has to be afraid of that and explosive mm. as well. Wow. <laughs> well then. Yeah, that was a quick turn. Yeah, <laughs> no hesitation there. Oh, and the Death Lord is not good here. Yeah, it doesn't do that much. Combined with the Clive Zuga, Tom has has a way to kill it just with what he already has on the board. Yeah. Mm, oh man, do you just arc and golem into the trap? I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean it. It doesn't feel good, but nothing. Nothing, Nothing feels, feels good here. Good here. Yeah. I've noticed that throughout this uh, entire series, Oskaka has been pretty much losing with Agro Paladin every time. He's been struggling yeah. with it, yeah. And yeah. he also hasn't gotten a good Divine Favor off ever. No, like, he, he hasn't has, gotten he hasn't a Divine drawn, Favor yeah. <laughs> ever. <Yeah. laughs> like, in all of these games, he does, just doesn't draw it. Is it possible that he forgot that card in this deck? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, unlikely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in theory, I guess. Yeah. You, you know, uh, in our last series uh, with that involved Vortex, yeah. he actually talked to us right after his matches, and he was basically really stressed in the, in the entire all, in all the zoo games because he realized he hadn't drawn Void Collar. He was wondering <laughs> if he actually forgot to put that in his deck. Wow. Yeah, I, I've had that in like ladder games, but never in, never in a tournament. I had it in Challenge Stone, but that was uh, kind of special because you had a very limited time to put the cards in. But I actually forgot to put the Inner Mates in my Druid, <laughs> so that was a bit unfortunate. But um. Yeah. 
This thing's gonna happen. That, that, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Just going yeah. That is that. Yeah. I saw a bit of a spell from Oskaka. But yeah. You it's, know, it's, it's, like, mm. it's Hearthstone. Yeah, it is. There's, there was nothing he could do with those draws with the aggro paladin there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, it's been nice casting again. Of course. I'll make some room. <laughs> okay. For the players. Yeah. All right, we're gonna uh. have Tom here for the winner interview. Tom, first, uh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> How did you feel about that series overall? Um, result? Or? Just like overall feeling. How do you feel? Uh, What's in your heart? I feel so bad when, when my hunter lose straight two. Yeah, because I think my hunter and Drew is not really good against the aggro painting. Yes, so I'm pretty happy that I win, yeah. No, very nice. So your next series will be against uh, Vortex. Did you get a chance to see the next uh, their matches previously? Yeah, I have seen, yeah. Do you think you're favored with just your lineup overall against Vortex's lineup? Yeah, how do you feel? He I think... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I think my favorite is Tice because he has the uh, control paladin. Yeah, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. So you think you're gonna be fine against the patrons and zoo and what else was what was explained? Uh, Hunter uh, and Hunter. and Druid. For no, Mage. Mage. Okay. Oh yeah, just yeah, the tempo match. So yeah. So you think you're a favorite in that match? Um, like 50-50. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, Tom, is this your first like top four replacement in a tournament before in a major tournament? Uh, top four. Yeah. Um, I have top four in BlizzCon qualify okay. and uh, a Taiwan's Taiwan's um, a Taiwan's tournament about. Uh, thirty, uh, three thousand dollar. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, pretty impressive, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. if you win your next match, I believe you are guaranteed to get more than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. 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 We know you're also a player who like plays Hearthstone every day. All these open qualifiers. What's life like these days playing Hearthstone all the time? Um, it's. Pretty tired because I I always play um our country in the morning uh -huh. yeah but it's really it's really happy we could have so many tournament to join yeah no oh, well thanks Tom and you know what this concludes the round of eight we're gonna be moving on to the semifinals pretty soon let's take a look at those brackets. Yes, so first up we're gonna have Bowder going up against Hoish. That will be uh, it will be some time from now. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how soon. But we're gonna have a have a break after this. But uh, um Bowder against Hoy and uh, then after that it, we will have Vortex against Tom Six O two two nine. What do you think of this top four? Yeah. Uh, I believe the uh, the semifinals will begin at 17 o'clock local time, so you definitely can look forward to that. Okay. A uh, pretty good lineup, I'd say. Uh, Hoj is probably my favorite uh, to win the entire tournament. I called it way yeah, before did. in the you round did. of 32. Yeah. So my horse is still in it. Yeah. Uh, all the other names, like I think these are all names that you would expect to like get mm. to top four. None of them are real surprises. No, not really. I mean. My favorite, uh, when we were talking about before the tournament started, it was life coach, and he barely lost to Powder. But uh, Powder also a great player, so it's not like it's a huge upset to see him uh, see him beat the beat the coach. But uh, yeah, Hoish has been looking really strong. I think uh, at this point, uh, I would also like I'm gonna just jump on board and and say that he he might be the favorite out of these four, so maybe take it take it all down. Yeah, I'm certainly really excited, and I'm excited to cast it with you. Just in a few short. Minutes? 50, in 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Yeah. 55. 55 minutes, exactly. We're getting words. So I'll see you guys right then.